For the last four months, I've been using the Google Pixel 6 Pro. And a few weeks to that, I was also using the S21 Fan Edition. So I decided to switch back to my iPhone 13 Pro to see exactly what it felt like after getting so used to Android for such a long time. And I kind of regret it because it's not quite as I remembered it. Hey, my name is Pete, and on this channel, we are talking about the latest and greatest tech from phones and smart home tech through to cloud services. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing to the channel down below. It's 100% totally free, doesn't cost you a thing, and it really, really helps me out to create more content like this. So a huge thank you if you did. Now let's begin. For those of you who haven't followed along, I am a lifelong Apple iPhone user who had never changed to Android because it's just awful. Who switched to Android then and keeps trying to switch to Android because actually it's not that bad. There are some really, really good things. And most recently, I picked up this Google Pixel 6 and the Galaxy Watch 4 in an attempt to fully switch away from the iPhone. And it was great for a while. But over time, the Pixel 6 Pro has seemingly become buggier and buggier. It's something I couldn't really address on my last video, which I made literally days before the January update dropped. But since that January Pixel update, I'm having issues with screen refresh rates, the Google voice dictation, which is awesome, but just doesn't work as if the microphone's broken half the time. But it's only been since that January update. And it was made even more clear to me when I switched to the Samsung S21 Fan Edition for a few weeks, because that phone just didn't have any of those issues. Although it was missing lots of the cool Pixel features when they work. Actually, let me know in the comments down below what your experiences have been. Like, honestly, this is so polarizing. There seems to be a huge group of people who haven't experienced a single issue with either Android 12 or their Google Pixel, but another probably even huger group of people who have serious issues, like way more than I do. So, um, so yeah, comment down below and see what you've seen. So I went back to my iPhone. And so here are five things that I've now noticed going back to my iPhone that I never really noticed before. And after those five things, three things that I really, really missed on Android. Number one, issues and bugs like I'm not sure how this happened but I left iPhone with this rosy picture that everything worked everything is great and there are no bugs everything is awesome. everything. but immediately upon switching back to my iPhone I've had issues with the YouTube studio app for yeah last four months now this in itself isn't uncommon with Android crashing and but for me to notice this on iPhone was kind of brand new to me that was then followed up by Facebook also crashing on me whilst using it and I think after using an iPhone for so so long you just get used to when something becomes the norm like an app crashing you just learn to live with it and your brain doesn't even really process that it's a problem anymore it's just oh cool okay swipe up quit the app and relaunch and yay number two whilst I think the widgets themselves are of better quality on the iPhone. I was kind of annoyed when I realized that I couldn't scroll items on my Todoist checklist unless I actually went into the app itself. Now I did have issues with widgets taking up too much space in Android whereas Apple's definitely seem to be better use of space but when you do use launchers like Nova Launcher on Pixel and Android you can customize exactly what takes up what space. Like that can be really really powerful. Number three is swipe to unlock. Why? Why do I need to swipe to unlock? Why can't I just use Face ID? That you know really good really powerful really secure thing that only iPhones have to unlock my phone without having to use my finger to push that notification screen up. Why? Now I have had a few moments where I've just been able to glance at my phone and it unlocks without going to the home screen has been useful. A few, a handful. If I get a notification for example and I can't pick up my phone then a quick glance down at the table where my phone is will unlock the phone and then just show me whatever notifications just come through without touching anything. That's, that's really cool. But it would be great to have an option to just skip the notification screen entirely because 99% of the time we're unlocking our phone so well, we can actually use it and go into the apps and all of the things. Number four has been customization. When going back to the iPhone, it's definitely noticeable that you just don't have that level of customization that you do on Android. I mean, that's pretty obvious to most people. And particularly for me, things like setting the default apps for everything, which is kind of getting better with iPhone, but not quite there yet, that can get annoying. I still have issues from time to time where my iPhone connects to Bluetooth headphones or the car, and it just thinks it has to start playing music, even though I haven't told it to, and it always has to be music from my Apple library. Even though I don't really use Apple or iTunes, I haven't really used it for years, so it's all like old music anyway, but I'd rather rather set Spotify up as my default music app so it should default playing from Spotify but it doesn't because on iPhone you can only really set the basic settings of web browser and only really recently the email clients so we're not quite there yet and whilst I moaned about the widgets being awkward sometimes on Android but better quality on iPhone it's still annoying that we're moving one thing around on the home screen that everything follows it and I can't just have some empty space like I might do on Android. Number five is the notifications. I have to say that after using Android for quite some time now the notifications aren't as 
as customizable on the iPhone as they are on Android. And that's actually kind of bugging me now. Like I have options to have some things in a summary view, which is really handy for things that you don't really want to see during the day, but maybe want a summary at the end of the day. Maybe things like news, like, that's quite handy. But the iPhone definitely has a way to go to get the level of notifications customizability as with Android. And it sucks. But with everything bad comes some good. So what are three things that I've actually missed after going from the iPhone to Android and then back to an iPhone again? Well, number one, it's the handoff. These are features that actually I didn't really use before or use, but just kind of gotten used to as part of my day. But the seamless copying information back and forth between devices is so efficient. The main one that I always use, of course, is finding a phone number on my Mac and then wanting to actually call it. Well, at least Google and Pixel have got you covered because you can just right click and call from your Google phone within Google Chrome. And same as Apple, where you just click and call from your iPhone. But it is the rest of these seamless features that the whole Apple ecosystem offers. Like I can copy an image or video or text on my Mac and then just go to any app on my phone and just paste and it's there. There's no firing up a third party app, it's just there. And that links into number two, which is seamless audio switching. Now I used to have issues with this all the time, but I don't really know what's changed. Maybe Apple's just kind of wanting to get me back, but since changing to Google and back again, it's actually been really good. Like I'll be using my Beats headphones or the AirPods and then come sit at my desk and they'll switch to my Mac, then pick up a phone call, they'll switch to my phone. It actually works. Like, really, really well for me now. The iPhone, for example, hold it close to my HomePod mini at the back there, and the audio just switches over to the speaker. And even features like pairing two sets of headphones to a phone so a friend can also listen from the same phone, really quite cool. And that brings us to number three, which I know will be quite contentious among some of those watching. It is the experience and reliability. Because when using the iPhone, one thing that I haven't really seen yet is slowdowns or stuttering or juddering or anything other than the iPhone working at full speed. On Android, across multiple phones now, I've seen time and time again where maybe installing all of the latest application updates will then cause the phone to slow down or lock up. Like, yes, yes, I know, because obviously the phone is busy because it's doing something and using its processor to do something. But on Apple, that doesn't happen. It's intelligent enough to know not to slow the phone down just because you want to install like updates, it will just go through the list of installing them and it takes just as long as it does on both phones. It doesn't feel any slower though or faster than Android, but it manages to do it without that slowdown. It doesn't really fall under bugs because it's not really a bug, but it's definitely something I've seen consistently across Android phones that I guess they work more, more like a computer, like tax the system by running something intensive and everything slows down as the power then gets diverted towards doing you know, that thing. Now I'm still going to hold on to my Pixel because genuinely, genuinely, I think it is a great phone and I think it will be great will be great once they work through the bugs. And I honestly really hope they do because that would just suck otherwise. I'm also waiting for their Google Watch to come out, so I'll be reviewing that as soon as I can get my hands on it. But for now, go and check out what's to come for the Apple glasses later this year or my other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.